Hi, welcome to Delta. I'm Kelly Broadbeck, product manager for Teledyne FLIR's Cyrus drone. Cyrus is a commercial drone and it stands for Secure Infrared Aerial System. The security part is our key feature. Cyrus doesn't connect to the internet, so your data is always safe. Cyrus just speaks between the drone and its controller. All the data is stored on the drone or in the controller until you decide where you want to put it. Today we're going to cover things that you should know as you're starting to learn to fly Cyrus. Let's first talk about geofencing. There is none. When we designed Cyrus, we spoke to a lot of different pilots, particularly in law enforcement, and being able to deploy quickly was a high priority for them. So Cyrus is not geofenced. That puts a lot of responsibility on you, the Part 107 pilot, to know where you are and to know that it's safe to fly where you are. Next, I'd like to cover GPS convergence. Depending on where you are, the amount of satellites above you and the interference that are in the area, Cyrus will take various lengths of time to lock GPS. We highly recommend that you always fly with GPS lock. There's a symbol on the main control screen. It's red and it's talked about in the user manual. If that red symbol appears, that means you don't have GPS lock. Please do not try and avoid the GPS lock process by putting the drone into attitude mode. If you take off in attitude mode, the drone is likely not gonna know where it took off from. So if you have a disconnect, return to home event, it's not gonna know where home is. Attitude mode should be used in rare circumstances by very experienced pilots. Simply be patient, wait for GPS lock. Sometimes it happens within a couple of seconds, sometimes a couple of minutes. And again, it just depends on your location. When the red GPS symbol clears, you're ready to start the props and get going. Cyrus has a collision avoidance system that's a little unique. It's a front radar system, but this is a key feature for our law enforcement customers because they often have to chase the bad guys at night. Same for our firefighter customers. The radar will look forward about 100 feet, and if it detects an object, it will stop the drone. When you're in collision avoidance mode, the drone's speed will be limited. The rest of the collision avoidance system is on the underside of the drone. So as you're landing, it's looking, it's calculating. When you get to about three feet above the ground, Cyrus kind of takes over from you. It goes into a landing mode, a soft landing mode, where it will do some extra calculations and bring the, the drone down even slower than uh, before. When you're in this mode, and it's decided to land, you'll have XY control. You'll be able to move it around, but just let it come down and land. You can push it up, but you can't push it down any faster once it's decided to go into its soft landing mode. Cyrus, like any other drone, has a return to home feature. And where this is most important is if there's a disconnection between the controller and the drone. Cyrus will automatically come back. On the controller, there's a little house button that you can push and it will return to home when you do that. You preset the elevation for return to home. It'll go to that elevation. It'll come over to its takeoff point and it will slowly come down. When the batteries are at 10%, it will go into an, uh, the drone will go into an automatic return to home situation. You can override this, but we caution you if you keep overriding the return to home every time the battery level comes down and it gives you a warning, uh, eventually you may run out of batteries. And we've had a few pilots do that. Know that the batteries will drain more quickly when they're warm and when they're at the end of their charge. So going from 90% to 80% charge may take several minutes when the drone is first in the air. If you're at 10%, it's gonna go from 10 to zero much more quickly than it did from 90 to 80. So you wanna be careful about all that. We highly recommend 
that when the automatic return to home because of low battery comes on, that you let the drone return to home. Is Cyrus Remote ID compliant? The simple answer is yes. Cyrus uses a Bluetooth module. It broadcasts. It's completely compliant with the FAA's rule. When you first get your Cyrus, you'll be asked to put the serial number of the drone into the controller so that the controller knows what serial number to broadcast as part of the remote ID system. After that, the system is silent as far as uh, what you need to know. It'll just be there and be working and be compliant. Next, I'd like to talk about takeoff surfaces. Uh, there's four basic ones. There's asphalt, there's concrete, there's dirt, there's grass. I like to take off in very short grass. Now, the grass can't be too long or it'll interfere with the payload as it calibrates itself at the beginning of flight operations. You don't want to impinge on the payload. The grass is best because it's cool, it's soft, so when you come back and land, it's a nice surface for landing on, uh, and there's no dust that's going to take off uh, when, you, when you go flying. If you're in dirt, you'll kick up dust. That could uh, interfere with the sensors. It could make the drone dirty and you don't want that. So dirt is okay, uh, grass is better. We prefer not to fly on concrete. Asphalt is fine, AstroTurf is fine, but just be mindful of the fact that these can be very hot surfaces. So if you're taking off on a 90 degree day, that asphalt, uh, AstroTurf, synthetic turfs, they can be 150 degrees easily. And that can put the batteries in an over temperature situation where performance will be affected. With the firmware and all the battery checks that we do on Cyrus, uh, the flight control firmware may not let you take off if it detects that the batteries are getting too hot. You also want to be careful about perching on roofs. Law enforcement does this a lot so they're not hovering, they land on a roof and they survey a scene. Uh, firefighters will do this sometimes as well. It's a way of conserving batteries and it's a great strategy, but if that roof is hot, you know, it's Texas or Florida in the middle of summer, the batteries can get too hot and that can compromise the performance of the drone. So you want to be careful about that. Exercise caution when operating Cyrus near large concrete structures, such as freeway overpasses or buildings or large concrete parking lots that might be reinforced with rebar. The metal in these structures can interfere with Cyrus's navigation system. I want to conclude uh, by touching again on attitude mode. Cyrus has three modes. The switch on the controller takes care of them all. P is position, and that's what we recommend you fly in. That's a GPS locked flight mode. You'll be able to fly at about 18 miles per hour, and that does the job for most applications. S mode is sport. It's also GPS locked. It's a lot of fun once you have some experience and time with Cyrus. You can fly up to about 40 miles an hour with it. So if you need to cover a lot of distance, that's the way to do it. Attitude mode is the other mode. It's marked with an A on our controller. And this is where you don't have GPS lock. You are literally a, a hockey puck on an ice rink, moving around as the wind blows you around. There are times when this is an appropriate mode for very experienced pilots to fly in, but we don't recommend it for most pilots. Stick with P or S mode and you'll have a great time with your Cyrus. We have a lot of information on our website, including FAQs, uh, firmware updates. That's fleer.com forward slash Cyrus. We encourage you to go there, encourage you to read the user manual. Thank you so much for watching today. Happy flying with Cyrus.